A La Mesa business owner arrested this morning after being seen on camera attacking reporters outside his store. Man learning his fate for murdering a Fallbrook couple and their children. A community coming together today to celebrate the life of a local student who was killed when her plane was shot down over Iran. 10 News Midday starts now. Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Happening now, man convicted of killing a Fallbrook family, learning how long he'll spend behind bars. I'm Jim Patton. I'm Virginia Cha. 10 News anchor Vanessa Van Hefty is at the San Bernardino Courthouse with the latest. The McStay family has been waiting 10 years for this day to arrive and upstairs here. It is a packed and an emotionally charged courtroom with family on both sides. The McStay family will make victim impact statements prior to the sentencing today. Prosecutors this morning likened this case to a circus after what happened on Friday. Convicted killer Chase Merritt murdered a Fallbrook family of four nearly a decade ago. The couple and their two young sons found buried in the Mojave Desert. McStay and Merritt were business partners. Merritt tried to fire his lawyer and have his conviction thrown out on Friday. Those efforts failed. Merritt is facing two options, life in prison without parole or the death penalty, which the jury recommended. Merritt is facing two options today, life in prison without parole or the death penalty, which the jury recommended. In San Bernardino County, Vanessa Van Hefty, 10 News. Well, the man you see there in the jacket who police say assaulted news crews has been arrested. Yeah, yesterday the La Mesa business owner was being questioned by reporters about his connection to other crimes when this happened. 10 News reporter Marie Cornell live at the police station. And Marie, police had trouble finding him? Yeah, Jim, so police say after this happened, the man disappeared and they looked for him all over La Mesa. He was eventually found in San Diego where he was taken into custody. It's because of this video, Peter Karzis has been arrested. The 76 year old was booked this morning on felony vandalism and misdemeanor battery charges stemming from that incident. Karzis was at the center of a loot act and battery investigation. News crews were questioning him about it when this video was shot. Addie Pastori and her husband say they were assaulted over the weekend. They were walking past Peter's business in La Mesa when she says he spit at her husband. Not even 24 hours later, she discovered this viral video showing him attacking news crews. But despite all of that, she says she feels sorry for Karzis and wants him to know this. I wish him no harm. I wish him all the help that he needs to get better and that there are people who do still care about him and no one deserves to be terrorized. As for Addie's case, I'm told they are working with investigators and then all of that will be handed off to the district attorney's office for review. Live from La Mesa, Marie Cornell, 10 News. Marie, thank you. San Isidro home left covered in soot after flames tore through it early this morning. Red Cross now helping the family who lives there. Started a little after midnight, firefighters had started putting out the fire when they were told that someone may be trapped inside. As they looked around, they found the family dog was still in there. Sadly, that dog did not make it. A woman was taken to a hospital to be checked out, but everyone else is doing okay. The cause of the fire under investigation. Well, the man accused of a hit and run that killed a bicyclist who was a young father is in court today. Tenuous anchor Mary McKenzie is live outside Vista Court with the latest. Mary. At Virginia, we stepped out of court. It was very emotional inside the courtroom. Some of Kevin Lentz's family and friends are inside right now having to see pictures of the crash scene and of Kevin. Today is a preliminary hearing where the judge will hear all the evidence, decide if there is enough to move forward. Jamison Connor is uh, accused. He's facing a bunch of charges. The judge asking us today not to show his face. Those charges, though, are for two incidents, one for the day, of course, of the horrific crash back in November, and then also some pertaining to the day he was arrested. Len uh, Kevin Lentz was on a bike ride in November on La Honda Drive in Escondido when he was hit head on by a driver speeding, going the wrong way on a blind curve. That driver took off, leaving Lentz, a young father and avid athlete, dead. We learned from an Escondido police officer on the stand today that a witness to the track to the crash rather tried to follow the car said the driver turned and said I'm sorry before driving off. The crumpled sedan found later not far from the crash scene 
but no sign of the driver. Then days later, Escondido police announced Connor's arrest. We have video from early December when he was in court on charges from that arrest, when officers said they confiscated methamphetamine as well as a loaded weapon from the truck that Connor was driving with his four-year-old son in the back seat. It seems as though the defense is going to argue that it wasn't Connor who hit Kevin Lentz that day. This hearing is expected to go just a half day, so we may have an answer from the judge as early as this afternoon. We're live in Vista. Mary McKenzie, 10 News. Mary, thank you. Right now, the impeachment trial underway in the Senate and lawmakers are bracing for some marathon sessions. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell wants to give each side 24 hours to make their case, which could be spread out over two 12-hour sessions apiece. Still unclear whether new witnesses will be introduced. McConnell says the rules set up a level playing field in the Senate, but Democrats are pushing back. This is not a process for a fair trial. This is the process for a rigged trial. This is a process you use if you want to hand in hand, working in concert with the president, allow the president to continue to obstruct the Congress. We're airing the proceedings live on ABC 10, but you can stay with us here on your streaming device for more local news. Today, Alliant University is remembering the student who was killed when Iran shot down the Ukraine Airlines plane she was on. People are gathering at the Alliant Welcome Center in Scripps Ranch for a memorial for 23-year-old Sara Sadat. Sara, her mother, and her 21-year-old sister were all on that plane on their way home from Iran to Canada after visiting family. The school asked for input to advance to, from, uh, in advance from classmates about the kind of vigil or memorial they would like to see to honor Sara. The event starts at 2.30. Well, this morning, police looking for the driver who rammed into these vehicles in National City. You see the row of damage there. It just gets worse down the line here. They were partner Melrose and Highland when it happened around 2.30 this morning. In all, four cars damaged. The back of one car ending up with a gaping hole in the back. Neighbor was awakened by the loud noise, ran out to see the driver taking off and then making a quick stop. He started to take off, but his uh, bumper was dangling. I jumped the fence and he made it right on Melrose. He, the person jumped out, ripped off the, the bumper, and then he took off. Driver did leave the bumper along with his license plate, which police are now using to try to find him. Parents are expected to pack another school board meeting in San Marcos tonight to express their frustration about administrators hired by Superintendent Carmen Garcia. San Marcos Unified Parents have asked for a vote of no confidence against Garcia and have asked for a third party investigation into her hiring practices. Now, parents say there's been several long time and well liked administrators who've left the district. They believe Garcia forced them out. They also asked about the hiring process. The district says when they hire staff, they go through several rounds of interviews, but the board president did acknowledge there is room for improvement.